Hi, you're watching Strangeware, and this is a piece of junk. Welcome to the first video. About a year ago, I built myself my very own first computer, which you can see right there behind me, which I will surely be making a video about too. But ever since then, I've kind of become the IT service guy for family and friends. And from time to time, I've now been asked to upgrade someone's computer, which has been dying for a long time and suffering in tremendous amounts of pain. And that's actually what we'll be doing today. So what you can see here is the computer I've been given. All I know about it, it has a 450 watt power supply, Intel Pentium 4 processor, and three sticks of, I assume this is DDR2 RAM, and oh my, this slot is actually missing the clip, so it's just the hole in there by force. Cool. It has some sort of a, an old display retro card and also an ethernet card because this motherboard does not have an onboard ethernet. So, well, there's also this SSD, which I'd say this is the best performing part in the whole PC, no doubt. And uh, well, this is actually one of the few things we will be keeping. So let's power this up. Oh man. Let's power this up and see what's under the hood. <clears throat> and there we go, uh, thanks to the SSD, the boot times are actually pretty good. So let's just see what's inside this beast. And looking at looking at Spessy, we can see the CPU is actually as advertised the Intel Pentium 4, a single core dual thread processor. Uh, 90 nanometer technology, that's really really old now. Uh, there's also 2 gigabytes of DDR RAM, clocked at 200 megahertz and single channel. So yeah, that's something <laughs> just makes you laugh today. Uh, as storage, you can see that uh, Kingston SSD, 128 gigabytes. Uh, in reality, 111 gigabytes. Well, there go the marketing gimmicks. And of course, the graphics card. This thing can't even be called a graphics card. It's a Metrox Millennium G550. It's more like a display adapter. It has a massive 32 megabytes uh, onboard memory. So uh, the irony here is this card is actually being advertised as a professional graphics card. It cannot even output a full HD resolution to the, to the display. It's only capable of the standard 1376 by 768. So yeah, that's something you want to keep in mind when you, if you're getting a professional workstation, this is the thing to get. And I believe that's pretty much it for this. And let's see if we can get Belly Benchmark to run. We've set everything to as low as possible, even the resolution. It, I still believe what we are going to get is a brief black screen and an error. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Blender is also a no-go. 
because of the OpenGL, not even OpenGL support. Well, this thing has seen better days. I guess that's pretty much all we can get from this, th this thing. We could run the Counter-Strike that's installed here and I from experience know it will run at about uh, like 25 FPS at HD resolution. So nothing you would write home about. So let's kill this thing and give it some new intestines. Okay, so upgrading the components, we can see quite a major difference in start speed. Let's check out the statistics with Spassi. So the CPU is now Intel Core i3-30-40. It's a 2-core 4-thread CPU, clocked at 3.4 GHz. And we're supporting that by 8 gigabytes of uh, dual channel RAM and uh, for the time being uh, I've put in a different SSD so that I have all my uh, all my applications on it and major improvement here is definitely the graphics card this is a GTX 660 and we actually get this one in a bundle with uh, RAM and CPU so it was uh, quite cheap and I believe this is quite sufficient for uh, pretty much any uh, decent load we can throw on it. So first off let's run Valley Benchmark and yes we will leave this at Extreme HD as opposed to Unbenchmarkable on the Pentium 4 system. Let's see what do we get. And we are getting the FPS are uh, sitting around 30. And let's just try to run a one benchmark here. And there you have it, we've gone from unbenchmarkable to a score of 1286 with the average FPS of 30. That's, uh, I believe, quite a nice result. And uh, the temperatures are just fine as well. Let's run Spessy here. And we can see Core i3 not getting over 50 and I've seen the uh, GPU hitting uh, something around 70 degrees Celsius, so that's quite fine. Also, uh, you have seen there's quite a beefy cool cooler sitting atop of this i3, so, well, that should just take care of everything we may uh, throw at this system. Okay, so let's try something which has become sort of a standard and that's Metro Last Light. And for this I will need to just quickly find benchmark.
Okay, we've set everything to max, everything to be maxed out, and let's run it two times. And off we go. And now for the pass number two, in my experience, it usually requires two passes to reach the full potential. The first one usually is kind of stuttering in the beginning. Okay, so both passes are done and let's see the results. Average frame rate of the second pass is 18.52 with minimum frame rate 6.44 frames per second so yeah that's actually not bad again compared to previously it being unbenchmarkable this is a substantial improvement i will definitely be testing some uh, blender performance so this should give me a, a quite a good idea about uh, what this system will be capable of so let's shut this one down and there we go so if you too have an older system like this one used to be at home but you still would like to play some of the newer titles you can see the upgrade cost is not that terrible. We were able to get a new CPU, GPU, CPU cooler, motherboard and memory for about $180. If you already have a decent at least dual core but I would recommend a quad core CPU and a motherboard with a PCI Express slot, you can reduce the cost even lower or you could get a much better GPU for your money uh, because the uh, new 1080s and 1080, oh sorry, 1050 and 1050 Ti actually start at somewhere around $150 and so do the AMD RX 460s. So that might be a very good choice as well. Uh, the original plan was actually to put a 1050 or 1050 Ti into this machine, but the budget uh, set by uh, our friend was uh, not actually allowing that. We were also not able to simply put in just the graphics card because you can see on the uh, old motherboard there is no PCI Express slot, this is only a GP slot and there are no reasonably well uh, graphics cards made for with uh, a GP socket. We might now actually be able to sell the old board with a CPU and the original GPU and Ethernet adapters for somewhere around let's say 20 bucks which will again uh, give us some more uh, headroom for uh, a better GPU. So the plan now is to uh, sell the motherboard uh, from the original setup for, as I said, about 20 bucks. Then we could get uh, rid of uh, the GTX 660 for something about, let's say, 60 bucks. And uh, then we only have to add another um, 50, 60, 70 bucks to get a 1050 or 1050 Ti if we splice up a little more. But that's actually for the new owner to decide. There is however uh, one small problem when it comes to upgrading your old PC and that's the power supply. And uh, it surely is a problem in, uh, in this case because this is an old uh, Eurocase 450 watt power supply 
and uh, well, it's had its years. Uh, when we first turned on the PC, the PSU is making a terrible noise, it was making those noises even before we uh, made the upgrade to newer hardware. And uh, well, I really don't trust this, P this PSU and in the long term I believe this could actually lead to a much bigger fault. So what I decided to do is spend uh, $30 on a new power supply. This is a 430 watt power supply by EVGA. It's not their uh, 80 plus gold rated series. This is just 80 plus. But yet I believe this uh, is still much, much better than what's uh, already inside the case. And uh, assuming that the owner will uh, be upgrading the PC, I believe it's actually a very good idea to have a better power supply uh, that won't ruin your PC in the long run. So let's put the power supply in and uh, hopefully end this video. Okay, that's all for today's video. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment, tell me what I should improve or what kind of content would you like to see next and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!